Hey, it's Mark Montano with Make Your Mark. Today we have some bright ideas to share with you that are all about lights. We'll be revamping a lampshade, learning a great way to make trendy candle holders, stylizing a monochromatic chandelier, and Kristen Turner will be here to help us make a light up flower headpiece. Join us as we light up your life. This show is made possible by Krylon. Krylon has been formulating paints that deliver color, durability, and fast dry time since 1947. Our range of products expands from indoors to out with a variety of formulations to meet project needs, from plastic and laminate to rust preventative and craft and hobby products. And by Eclectic Products, makers of the E6000 family of adhesives. E6000 professional strength adhesives for crafts, decor, home repairs, scrapbooking, photos, framing, and more. E6000 industrial strength adhesive. Favecrafts.com is proud to sponsor Make Your Mark. At Favecrafts.com, you can find craft projects, videos, and tips. New crochet, Christmas crafts, sewing, kids crafts, jewelry making, knitting, paper craft projects, and more. And by Plaid Enterprises. Plaid has been happily helping crafters bring ideas to life with products such as Folk Art, Delta, Apple Barrel, Lucilla, Gallery Glass, One Stroke, and Mod Podge. Plaid, creative ideas made easy. We all have them. Those boring lampshades that you've lived with for years. Instead of throwing them out, give them a chic makeover. The great thing about redoing an old shade is that you can make it match your decor perfectly. And you avoid the cost of buying a new one. First thing you're going to want to do is take off all the dust on your lampshade and you can do that with a dust cloth, whatever you have. The next thing you want to do is take off the fabric ribbon across the top and across the bottom. And that's really easy to do. It'll just peel right off, especially on a fabric lampshade. You want to measure the sections of your lampshade so that you can make a pattern. This lampshade has six sections and they're all the same size. So I'm gonna measure them right now with my tape measure. So we have five and a half inches by six and a half inches and 10 and a half inches high. And we're going to create a paper pattern with those same dimensions so that we can use that to cut out our fabric pieces. The pattern doesn't have to be perfect. We just have to make sure that it's big enough to cover each section of the lampshade. The next thing we're going to do is cut out six pieces of fabric that will go on each section of the lampshade. I found this beautiful, crazy pink and silver fabric, which I think is gonna be amazing. This fabric has a pattern to it, so I'm going to cut out each piece of the lampshade one at a time so that I can repeat the pattern evenly all the way around on the lampshade. Instead of using my paper pattern again, I can now just take my pattern piece and place it on top of the fabric and cut around that. This way I can be assured that's the exact same pattern. Now that we've cut out all of our panels, I'm going to glue them to the lampshade using hot glue with just a teeny tiny bit of hot glue all around each piece. If you're using a lace fabric, be careful when you pat your pieces down because the glue will come through the lace and it will burn you.
Now, because this piece is just a little bit bigger, I'm actually gonna trim it just a tiny, tiny bit before we add the next piece. Pick fabrics that match your room. You know, pick a fabric that has a theme like an animal print or something like that and you can really, really do a lot by recovering a lampshade. Really adds a lot to a room. See how nice that looks? Once you get the hang of it, you'll see how quickly it goes. It's always better if your fabric panels are a little bit bigger than the size of your panel because you can always trim it down, but you can't add more. Now here's a helpful hint. There are silicone fingertips which allow you to touch hot glue and it doesn't stick to the fingertip. So when you're patting it down, you don't burn yourself and it doesn't make the glue strings, which is nice. All right, it looks amazing, but we're not done yet. Next thing we wanna do is trim off the top and the bottom, anything excess. I'm telling you right now, you are going to want to recover every single lampshade in your house once you start doing this. Who wants a boring white lampshade? I don't. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add ribbon trim from the top of the shade to the bottom of the shade to cover up the raw edges of each of the panels. Okay, it's really easy to do. Take this matching pink velvet ribbon. I'm just gonna hot glue it in a line from the top to the bottom. And you can be generous with the hot glue now and it will really hold the lampshade together. Just like that. This also gives your lampshade a really nice finished look. If you change out the colors of the ribbon and do a contrasting color, you can pull in another color that's in your decor. We're going to do this all the way around the lamp to cover up each section. So there you see the ribbon has covered up all of the raw edges where each of the panels meet. And now to finish it off, we're going to add this really fun beaded trim all the way around the top and the bottom. And that will cover up the raw edges of the top of our panels and the top of our ribbon. So what we're going to do is start hot gluing our trim on the edge on the side of this lampshade. Make sure it's nice and even all the way around. It gives it a very, very nice finish. Now you'll see that I'm gluing this trim a little bit above the top of the lampshade. And that way, if I want to, I can add a little bit more hot glue and press it down. Now, once you get to where you started with the trim, you're gonna cut off about an extra inch. Take a dab of hot glue right here on the end and then fold this over to give it a nice clean edge. And then add a little bit more hot glue and finish it off just like that. Now we're going to do the bottom and we'll be done. The great thing about the trim on the top and the bottom is that it covers up all of your little mistakes. And I make plenty. And we're done. something to wear on your head at your next party. There's nothing better than dining by candlelight. It adds a beautiful ambiance to any dinner party. I found a way to use inexpensive odds and ends from a thrift store to make chic candle holders that look like you found them in an expensive boutique. The 
first thing you need to do is head over to the thrift store or your local dollar store and run to the glass department. There's always a terrific selection of different glass pieces for not a lot of money. A lot of these I got for about 25 cents. So you can make an entire centerpiece for three or four dollars. A lot of the pieces that you're going to find in the thrift store are mismatched. They've come from sets, but it doesn't matter. The kookier the piece, the better. I love these Sunday dishes because turned upside down, they actually look really interesting. They look like the base of an expensive candle holder. Once you've gathered your mishmash of glass pieces, it's time to start experimenting. This is the fun part. Things like Sunday dishes are really good for the base of a candle holder. Wide glasses are really good for bigger candles. Try to arrange your pieces so they're at all different levels. This is the fun part for me because I love arranging the glass to see if I can make an impactful centerpiece. I think this looks great. Now it's time to glue them together. All you're going to need is a really strong industrial glue. Once your industrial glue is thoroughly dry, it's time to take your pieces outside and spray them with a stained glass spray paint. Now stained glass spray paint comes in primary colors, but you can mix them together. Red and blue to make a purple, yellow and red to make an orange. I'm gonna spray these in blue. Once your stained glass spray paint is dry, pop in the tea lights and you're ready for dinner. You can find old chandeliers at most thrift stores for a pretty low price. And since new chandeliers are so expensive, reworking them has become really popular. Often that means a complicated process, but today, I'm going to show you an easy way to upstyle a chandelier with inexpensive items to create a gorgeous monochromatic fixture that you can be proud to display in your home. You don't always need expensive crystals to hang from a chandelier. I like using things like plastic beads and Mardi Gras beads because you can find them anywhere. Now, what you wanna do though, is make sure that when you're adding them to your chandelier, that you're using a mixture of hot glue and industrial glue. Hot glue does not work with metal, but it will make it stick long enough for the industrial glue to dry. So that's how we're gonna put all the beads on the chandelier today. All right, so we're gonna try these beads right here and that looks pretty good. Now, since this chandelier is in three different sections, we are gonna make sure that we cut three different pieces the exact same length so that it's even all the way around the chandelier. It's easy enough to do. I know what you're thinking. You're like, what is he doing? Those beads are horrible. You're gonna find out. Okay, we have three equal lengths and now we're going to attach them to the chandelier and then we're gonna continue all the way around until we get the look that we want. So we're putting a tiny dab of industrial glue on the end of the bead here. And then we're gonna put a tiny dab of hot glue, which will keep it in place. I'm just gonna put it right on our chandelier. And that should hold it in place until the industrial glue is dry. You're going to want to take your time on this and hang your chandelier from like a shower curtain rod or something like that so that you can work on it the way I'm working on it. 
make your life a lot easier, I promise. Now we're going to continue hanging beads all around the chandelier. The other thing we're going to do is add decorative beads like these plastic faceted beads, which weren't that expensive, and these floral beads in different places like on the candlestick holder and on the base here, just to add a little bit of interest. I love really interesting lighting in my home. And part of the reason is because things like chandeliers and beautiful lamps are like jewelry for your home. It's a really great way to dress up your space for not a lot of money. It can really enhance the mood and make you feel very comfortable. Just for fun, we're gonna wrap the base of each light with these Mardi Gras beads. When I was younger, my dad used to haul things to the dump for people for extra money. And if there was something really cool in the back of his truck, he would stop by our house first and let my mom take a look at it. And she was always reconstructing lamps and sofas and chairs, things just like this. So projects like this always remind me of my mom. The next thing we're going to do is take our plastic faceted beads. Now these weren't very expensive at all. And we're going to hang them from our strands of beads. So we'll give it a little bit more interest. Just like we did before, we're using the hot glue and industrial glue trick. We're just gonna keep going crazy with these beads until it looks like I want it to look. Because this is an industrial strength glue, the chandelier is gonna last long enough to become its own antique. Before we take it outside to spray paint, you wanna take some little pieces of newspaper or magazine and stuff it inside where you screw in the light bulbs. You don't want any paint in there. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? All I did was spray paint it with a high gloss black enamel. Now, if you're putting it outside, use a gloss rust protector. Add your light bulbs and you're done. I sprayed this gloss black, but you can spray it any color you want. Monochromatic chandeliers are where it's at. My friend Kristen Turner is here to help me with the next project. Flower jewelry is really popular right now, showing up at music festivals and outdoor events everywhere. I've seen tons of great DIYs to make these accessories, but I wanted to kick it up a notch. I figured out a way to incorporate lights into these floral pieces to really make them pop. Check out this next project to learn how to brighten up your blooms. Kristen Turner is the creator of a blog and YouTube channel called Glitter and Glue. She's a DIY debutante and an expert in everything fashion. To top it off, she's an amazing designer and stylist. I'm so excited. I have my friend Kristen Turner here today from Glitter and Glue, and she is going to help me make light up floral jewelry. Light up. Light up. Yes. I have devised a way to take your simple floral headband, floral boutonniere, or floral hair comb and put a light in it. Wow. This should be fun. It's going to be fun. I love it. So it's like your friends can find you at a nighttime music festival. Exactly. Ah, that's exactly what it's for. Love it. The Nighttime Music Festival <laughs> Jewelry Finder. That's what it is. Dum dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a really simple project okay. because everybody knows how to wrap a comb and put flowers in it. So we're going to do that just to start off. Okay? 
And the first thing you want to do is kind of gather up the flowers that you'd like to wear in your hair, on your comb, or on your headband. And I've picked a few here. What do you think? Do you like these? I like these. All right, really simple. To give them a nice professional look, we want to wrap them with floral tape. You can get floral tape anywhere. I like to wrap the flower stems in floral tape because it looks prettier, it looks more real. There we go. Rock on, that looks amazing. So we've got our flowers and we are going to put them on a hair comb. And what you wanna do is take the stem of your flower and just sort of lay it across this, the comb, just like that. Put, hold that up, see that? We're going to take some green wire. You could use any kind of wire. I just happen to have green wire. Okay. I feel like I always end up using my jewelry wire. Yeah, okay. And we're going to wire the flowers to the hair comb. All right. Okay, just like this. Here, you want to help me? I'll hold this. You're such a good help. Thank you. I, you know. I love it when you come and help me out. You know. So you're wrapping your wire in between each tooth of the comb. Exactly. Okay. So we've got that. Now you could go crazy with the wire and keep wiring and keep wiring, but what you have now is a really nice base where you can hot glue the rest of the flowers in between. Now that's where your design expertise comes in because I would love for you to do that. Oh, I would love to do it. Now so you can pick the bigger flowers, right? Mm-hmm. And then sort of just get... I'll clip off some smaller ones for you. Okay, do you mind? There's that. Do you need to clip off that? If you'd like me to, I will. There you go. Great. Okay. Okay, so then you can just sort of arrange them. There you go. Oh, that looks good. The next thing we're going to do is something that is just so exciting. Okay. It's really exciting. Okay. You know, the MacGyver in me, how I love to take things apart. Okay. Usually I just break them. What I did was I took one of these safe tea lights. They, they're battery operated. You just click it on. And I was like, how can I take this apart and use it in a piece of jewelry or a craft project, right? All right. So I did. <laughs> I went nuts. And I just, I broke it apart. All right. It's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes they're screwed or sometimes they're glued. But I took it apart and I pulled out the little light bulb. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Exciting, right? Yes. No, this is really exciting. I'm so interested to see how you're going to do this. <laughs> I just am you know, amazed. And then you can take the battery out. And you've got this battery and your little light. All right. Okay. So all you have to do is figure out how the light works on the battery. Oh my. I need two tiny little pieces of tape. Okay. Two tiny pieces. Exactly. Well, that's good. That's good. Just and then you want to tape the wire to the battery. So the next thing we're going to do is take our very simple flower headband which is quite beautiful because you made it. Thank you. And a, just a dab of hot glue right down here at the bottom. Directly onto? On the tape and on the battery. Okay. It doesn't have to be neat. And you're just going to hide it inside. So if your light bulb doesn't light when you do this, just flip it around and put the wires on the opposite side. Let's glue this one in the other part of your hair comb. So there you have it. Light up floral hair combs. That is so fun. Put it on. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, where should it go? In the front. Actually, I'll let you do it. I, I don't know if I, I feel like I'm crowning a princess here. <gasps> okay. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That looks really, that looks really good. Now all you have to do is decide whether you're going to that midnight concert or a luau. Ooh, a luau.
This show is made possible by Krylon. Krylon has been formulating paints that deliver color, durability, and fast dry time since 1947. Our range of products expands from indoors to out with a variety of formulations to meet project needs, from plastic and laminate to rust preventative and craft and hobby products. And by Eclectic Products, makers of the E6000 family of adhesives. E6000 professional strength adhesives for crafts, decor, home repairs, scrapbooking, photos, framing, and more. E6000 industrial strength adhesive. Favecrafts.com is proud to sponsor Make Your Mark. At Favecrafts.com, you can find craft projects, videos, and tips. New crochet, Christmas crafts, sewing, kids crafts, jewelry making, knitting, paper craft projects, and more. And by Plaid Enterprises. Plaid has been happily helping crafters bring ideas to life with products such as Folk Art, Delta, Apple Barrel, Lucilla, Gallery Glass, One Stroke, and Mod Podge. Plaid, creative ideas made easy.